Section 4 of The Rural Magazine and Literary Evening Fireside, Volume 1, Number 2. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Greg Giordano the rural magazine and literary evening fireside volume one number two by various the desultory remarker number one at lucre or renown let others aim i only wish to please the gentle mind whom nature's charms inspire and lore of humankind Beatty. perhaps there is no nation existing amongst whom there is so large a proportion of readers as may be found in the united states the freedom of our form of government and its appropriate concomitant the freedom of the press impart the requisite facilities for a wide dissemination of knowledge and furnish the motives and the means for cultivating it with success of newspapers we have if not a redundant at least a copious supply they are introduced into almost every nook and by-place of our extensive territory and no individual who can read need deny himself the gratification of poring over their pages and learnedly discanting on their contents the moral influence of those popular vehicles of intelligence may therefore from these facts be properly estimated and the importance of their being judiciously conducted will at once be acknowledged it is not the ponderous volume the learned and elaborate dissertation the abstruse researches of the ontologist that moulds the sentiments of the great mass of any people and implants in their bosoms the everyday principles of action for to these they are utter strangers and the laborious student may continue to monopolize them without exciting in their minds the slightest regret that however which is brief and simple and practical in other words that which will be generally read cannot fail to produce a deep and lasting impression on the public mind with these convictions on the subject it is contemplated as leisure and inclination may suggest to furnish a series of occasional papers under the title indicated above the plan of the writer like those of his illustrious predecessors is broad and liberal unencumbered by systematic restraint he intends to ramble over hill and dale to seek for admission not only at the cottage but also at the mansion of opulence and no topic shall be excluded calculated to promote general utility to liberalize the public sentiment to enlighten the public mind in fine to make men better and by a necessary consequence to promote public and private happiness shall be his cardinal and favorite object human life and its incidents men and things literature and morals will all be kept in view and facts and illustrations which may be subservient to his purpose whether derived from observation or reflection from society or from books will not be forgotten or disregarded of the negative qualities of his proposed papers he can speak without reserve and with entire confidence they shall never offend the eye or ear of delicacy or of virtue immediate and personal observation is entitled to a decided preference where it is possible to be consulted but to him the extent of whose migrations have been merely from the blue bed to the brown this is a resource which will often fail distant countries in former periods of time will therefore be contemplated to use a significant phrase of dryden through the spectacles of books by thus cultivating an acquaintance with the generations which are past and by thus holding converse with the mighty dead we may augment the power of useful information fortify our good principles and become better qualified to perform the respective duties assigned us in the world human nature continues to travel onward with her venerable but untiring companion 
time without the least change of character every feature which appertained to her six thousand years ago will still be recognized by the discerning observer it is therefore extremely desirable that experience should not be lost upon us but that her beacons should serve as a polar star by which to steer our course with safety through the dangerous and perplexing labyrinths of life there is no question that the very essence of papers which shall successfully prefer claims to popular favor or to practical utility must be variety the strength of johnson himself could not shield his great moral work from the charge of unvaried and monotonous solemnity he inculcated the doctrine and exemplified it by his own writings that even uniformity of excellence will at length nauseate the palate not merely of the fastidious reader but of him likewise whose only object is truth a prominent purpose will be attained if the dominion of fashionable folly shall be narrowed and the attention of her votaries withdrawn from the frivolous and giddy circles in which they revolve and steadfastly directed to the great interests of society the cause of sound morals and unsophisticated virtue is it not a fact calculated to awaken the most profound regret that many of our fellow-citizens particularly in the wealthy metropolis of pennsylvania who are invested with an elevated rank in life and enjoy in profusion its good things appear to live only for themselves men of this description are really blanks in existence and mistake most egregiously the great errand of life they may appropriately adopt the language of prom fruit custom the world's great idol we adore and knowing this we seek to know no more now education more than truth prevails and naught is current but what custom seals thus from the time we first began to know we live and learn but not the wiser grow although sometimes assuming the province of a censor the desultory remarker will on all proper occasions delight to unbend the stern and rigid brow of reproof to mingle in the circles of innocent mirth and cheerfulness he who increases the stock of harmless pleasure makes the public his debtor but in order to ascertain that such is the character of pleasure the requisite tests must be faithfully and rigorously applied cheerfulness uniformly shuns all intercourse with vice but virtue is her favorite and appropriate companion the innocent are gay the lark is gay that dries his feathers saturate with dew beneath the rosy cloud while yet the beams of dayspring overshoot his humble nest the desultory remarker having thus in a spirit at once unreserved and candid introduced himself to the reader will for the present respectfully take his leave but with the hope of having other opportunities of cultivating a further acquaintance end of section four recording by greg ciardano newport ritchie florida